My name is Dico Modesto Cordero. I'm the president of the Demian and Marian Catholic Conference. And on behalf of the Demian and Marian Catholic Conference Board of Directors and all our members, I would like to welcome you to our webinar this morning. This is our second webinar on our theme, Hawaii Saints Inspiring the Artistic Journey. Uh, and today's presentation is titled, I am a fool for Christ. And it's a great treat that we have for you. But before I do introduce our presenter and tell you a little more about him and what he's gonna do for us this morning, I would like to get us started with prayer. And our presenter actually offered us this picture that you're seeing on your screen right now. Uh, this is one, a cross with pictures of patients with uh, disease uh, from Kalapapa. And this is one piece that he used on one of his sets when he performed the play of Damien. And uh, it's a beautiful picture uh, showing the sacrifice of Christ throughout the people of God. So with that in mind, let us begin this morning in prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we just celebrated the memorial of St. Damien this past May 10, let's keep him in our prayers and thank the Lord Jesus for the powerful witness of love that he has provided to us in St. Damien of Molokai. We pray this morning that we will have the same love toward all we meet, especially those who are different than us. St. Damien, you were a spiritual minister and leader to people with leprosy. Help us to remember those in our own life and culture who are seen as outsiders. Remind us to invite them into our world to make them feel welcome and respected. Keep us from treating those who are different as unworthy of love and respect. Help us to remember that all people are equal in God's eyes. Dear Lord, we bring to you in our heart all those who suffer from terminal illnesses and all of those who feel outcast from society in some way. We ask you to be with us today as we gather in memory of St. Damien and continue to guide us in peace, love, through our journey in this life. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. St. Damien, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our presenter this morning is Mr. Vincent Linares. Vincent grew up in Connecticut in an Italian-Irish middle-class neighborhood. And he attended a Catholic grade school and then an excellent public high school where the arts were important. Now, during his post-secondary education, he went and attended different colleges and universities and graduated with a liberal arts degree in 1968. Then he went in and served in the Peace Corps for three years in Micronesia, and then graduated from UH with an MA in Applied Linguistics, where then he went to work and taught at the University of Hawaii for over more than 36 years, especially at the Maui Community College where he retired in 2010. Now, as a child, his parents believed strongly that the arts were an integral part of growing up and introduced him to the stage, music, and the arts in general at a very young age. And throughout his career, he has been acting, directing, and producing plays on Maui while also serving as president of two, main, two Maui theater companies, one of them who he created in 2016, names the All Boy Productions, which is a theater company committed to staging both modern and plays of antiquity that are considered classic. Now, Vincent had performed his one-man play, Damien the Leper Priest of Molokai, since 2000, 
throughout the islands of Hawaii, multiple places in uh, US, US mainland, and at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland. He is thankful for all the riches of life that living on Maui have given him. And he hopes the beautiful words and the intimate personal portrait of Father Damien's life as acted in the play, Damien, are a powerful gift of thanks to his friends, his family, his community, and to those like him who aspire to live life as Damien did unselfishly. So without any further ado, let us welcome our presenter this morning, this afternoon, Vincent Linares. Welcome, Vincent. Aloha. Aloha from Kula, Hawaii. I understand there's somebody here from Kula attending. Yes? Oh, yes, there we go. Do. Okay. We had Tony there's a picture coming from Kula, Maui. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is a picture of me taken in 2000 of Father, as Father Damien. It's uh, the picture I've used uh, all over the world, and I still use it. And this picture is modeled after the statue of Father Damien that can be seen in the uh, state capital of the state of Hawaii and in the uh, statue hall in the U.S. Capitol. I think that's a slide that's coming up. Yeah. Can you he everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, good. So this is a picture uh, that I've used since 2000. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, that picture was taken. Yeah, there you go. And that was the picture was taken after that statue, which many of you may have seen. Um, now I want to do something very quickly. The process for today is going to be that I'm going to do several scenes. And after each scene... Uh, I will open it up for you to ask me questions. And those questions and the scene hopefully will help you understand the how, the why, the where, and the when of me doing uh, this play since the year 2000, over 150 times all around the planet. So uh, I don't know uh, if you can see me yet. I can't see myself. <laughs> oh, I see, I see Deacon. Yeah. Can anybody see me? There we go. So this is me. I'm 77 years old, and Father Damien was 49 when he died. So please give me a little uh, break there on the fact that I'm so much older now. But this is me, my glasses, my beard, and all that. And I'm going to take the glasses off. I've already put the cassock on. This is a cassock that I've worn for the last 23 years uh, that I've been doing Damien. And it's very important to an actor when he or she becomes a character that the costume and the dressing and the makeup is a part of a process. So very quickly, I'm going to do that for you. So first is the hat, the iconic hat that uh, is used many, many times to, sh to reflect Father Damien. This hat has been around the world in suitcases and in backpacks. It was in Rome with me when I went to Father Damien's canonization. And the final transformation to Damien is the glasses. And now I'm Father Damien. And hopefully this picture of me taken, uh, this picture looks somewhat like the picture taken 23 years ago. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and assume the persona of Father Damien, which is very hard to do at the moment, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm going to do a scene, a scene one for you. And at the end of the scene, uh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me about the scene, or about the character, please be free to ask. Uh, Deacon will, will handle those for us, okay? And I'm waiting for something to happen here on the screen. I see a, a slide that says transformation, okay? Here are some young boys. Here are some pictures of the people. And this is scene one. Molokai. Usually it's no trick at all to see your silhouette against the horizon, but the light's not quite right today. And never mind. In a little while, you'll be able to see her clearly. 
The first time that I saw Molokai, uh, the Gray Island, as the lepers called it, was from the railing of a ship that brought me to the Sandwich Islands. St. Patrick's Day, 1864, the R.M. Wood, five months at sea, out of Birmingham, entering the Hawaiian Islands, sweeps past all the islands till it comes just close enough to Molokai that I can see a part of her distinctly. A narrow, sour tongue of land sticks out into the sea. The loneliest, most useless piece of land that you can ever imagine. Rock-strewn, wind-whipped. I still find it unbelievable that I could come so close to it and have no premonition of what it was to become the saddest place on earth. Of course, I had no way of knowing that while I was still two months at sea, a doctor in Honolulu had proclaimed, I wish to bring to the public a matter of great importance. It is, ladies and gentlemen, the rapid spread of the new disease called my pake by the native population. It is oriental leprosy. It is, ladies and gentlemen, true oriental leprosy. And it will be the duty of the next legislature to enact measures effective but you mean by which to bring about the segregation of all those afflicted <laughs> from opposite ends of the world. Leprosy and I have come to the Sandwich Islands. <laughs> Contemporaries, you might say. <laughs> but leprosy was as old as time itself. And I, just 24 years old, Molokai. End of scene one. Any questions? What we like to do now, what Vincent would like to do now is if you had any questions for him as he's presenting these different scenes of the show, you can type it in the chat and I will introduce him the questions so that he can answer to you any comments you may have. So if anybody has any comments or questions, uh, I would like to start, uh, as people are typing, Benson, I would like to start by asking you, how did you prepare yourself to get into the role of Demian every time that you portrayed him on this show? <laughs> well, because the intent, because the play is so intense and because the emotions and the story that he tells about his life is so intensive, it takes me about a month. I've done the play over 150 times, but every time I do it, it's different because it's a different time, it's a different place, it's a different audience. So I don't, I don't do it as I've done it each time. It's different every time. So the whole range of emotions that I have to go through occur. And when I'm doing Damien, usually for a couple of weekends or something, I'm not, Vin I'm not Vincent. <laughs> I'm this other person uh, because uh, the words uh, take me over. Um, and if any of you are familiar with acting, uh, one of the things that we're taught is that you need to be in the moment. So when I'm performing, I'm not thinking about the lines. They're happening and the emotions are ha happening as they are. That's why I said at the very beginning, it's difficult to just pick up a scene and do it as I just did, but I try. So it's, um, it's an emotional journey every time because of the content and because of what he's telling the audience. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. That that did, and and I have to say, as a actor uh, myself, that I was really impressed that those lines came straight out of you. And you know, I guess this script has been tattooed into your veins and into your brain after so many performances that you can at any time just just come alive with with the character of Damien and and those lines. I I, I, I try. <laughs> And I'm cheating a little because off to the left of the computer, I actually have the script just in case because I want to get uh, I want to get everything in. People often remark to me, uh, many um, you've done this so many times. <coughs> Excuse me, have you memorized it? My answer is no. It's in there. It's deep in my brain. But just as I said, every time I do it, it's different. So um, I try to 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 rehearse a lot every time I do it because it is such a beautifully written play and the sentiments expressed are so wonderful that I want to get word for word if I can to honor the playwright. Somebody asked me 
if I film this? Yes, we have. <coughs> when we did the anniversary play, I'm choking for some reason. We filmed it. <coughs> but I don't, I don't particularly care for the film. I, I don't like looking at myself. And because I'm a perfectionist, I wanted it done perfectly. But they did a pretty good job. The problem is we can't show the film publicly because I don't have copyright. I don't have a right to show the film without permission from the family. And if any of you are interested in seeing this play, there is a wonderful video. I don't know if it's ever made into a disc by Terrence Knapp, the original Father Damien. It's a video uh, that PBS did in, uh, oh, I, I can't remember which year it is, but most libraries have it if you still have a VCR. It's a wonderful production. Uh, I have we nothing have on my screen. Yeah, Vincent, we have another question for you coming from Colette Higgins. She's asking if it's, are there a reason why you're using my packet versus my e packet? Uh, she believes that my is a directional in Hawaiian versus my e, which refers sickness or illness. Okay, well, she is asking a question that has to do with, which, which is a very good question, my pake, um, about the correct pronunciation of the Hawaiian language, which is very important. Because in Hawaiian, uh, your, the differences of how you pronounce your vowels and so forth change the meaning of the word. So my apologies if I didn't say that correctly. I try to uh, use my, my Hawaiian as best I can. My pake, which means uh, to Chinese, uh, Hawaiian Chinese, I believe, about the, where the disease came from. So apologies to pronunciation. I will try and I try, but in, in the heat of passion, it just comes out of my mouth. <laughs> we have one more question. Like Molokai. We go to the next. I used to say Molokai. Yeah. Uh, Benson, we got one more question, and then we probably go to the next thing after. Sure. Uh, this question is, uh, they're asking about uh, I know that I mentioned during your introduction that you had been in uh, Scotland uh, performing, uh, that you have been in various places in the United States and around the islands of Hawaii. So I don't know if that answered the question, but the person is asking, uh, where are some of the places where you have performed? So other than Scotland, United States, and Hawaii, is there any other places that you've been? Yes, I've done it in Asia. Uh, I've done it in England. I did parts of it in Rome, Rome during the canonization. Um, uh, in 2015, I believe, I did it in Kaolapapa, uh, which was an unbelievable experience. I've done it on all the islands in, the, in, in Hawaii, uh, California, San Francisco, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, New York City. I was part of the, um, the neighbor street after Father Damien in New York city and I was part of that celebration that was a wonderful experience uh five years ago I believe yeah so I've done it over 150 times to over 30,000 people and if I may brag I've raised over hundred thousand dollars that I then given to nonprofits, specifically to food banks across the state of Hawaii and, and uh, uh, yeah I've given a lot of money to food banks I, I don't take any compensation for this other than costs, production costs. Somebody okay, so, that, so we're talking to about static. The, yeah, yeah, we still a little static there, but uh, we wanted to set up the second scene and we are seeing on the screen now the picture of the clips of Carlo Papa and you said that that's set up for your next scene. Okay, and that particular photo is Kalawao. That's the original settlement of Father Damien. Um, he did not live in Kaolapapa very long. Uh, he moved there just before he died. So this is the original settlement. This is one of the most beautiful places on earth as far as I'm concerned. And that's the, the uh, beginnings of what he built with uh, John Dutton, the settlement. So uh, I'm still ready and I'm gonna go into another scene now, scene two. And uh, it's about the settlement and why it was established. So give me a moment and I will start. Along the shore there, off to the left, half hidden among that grove of pine trees and coconut trees is, is the government building, which housed the agency responsible for taking measures 
effective but humane to bring about the segregation of all those afflicted. In all good faith, they made those yellow flags and they hung them out throughout the kingdom and nailed them out throughout the kingdom on trees, on fences, and even on the, the doors of Michael Hall Chapel. In all good faith, I'm sure they bought that sour tongue of land that I first saw from the ship that I mentioned, that natural prison surrounded on three sides by a vicious surf, and on the fourth by steep black cliffs that stopped prevailing winds and made them dump their rain, that shut up the sun at noon so that the land lay half a day in the shadow, a, a place uh, without a sunset, the lepers called it. In all good faith, that government agency rounded up the lepers at gunpoint when necessary and shipped them off with a pair of pants or a cotton dress and promised the daily rations to supplement what it believed the lepers themselves would grow. And in all good faith, they called that empty wooden building a hospital and promised to staff it, to staff it, and to stock it with supplies. Effective? Oh, yes. It was very effective because it kept the lepers out of circulation so that the foreign population could be comfortable. Humane? No, it was not humane. It was a barbarous form of isolation. That tongue of land became a living graveyard. Can you imagine a community of the living dead? Sometimes as many as thousands of lepers crowded six, eight, ten into stinking one-room shacks. Can you imagine a community of living dead without a doctor or nurse, no resident police, no law, no work, no comfort, and no hope. And where the sickest lay on the bare wood floors, waiting for somebody to come, but nobody came except the flies by day to feast upon their sores and the rats by night. Some of the more able-bodied lepers, those able to rest some pleasure from the rest of their lives, gathered together in a place that, that we called uh, the village of the fools. They brewed liquor from the roots of plants and they spent their days and nights gambling, fighting, whoring, and raiding the rest of the settlement, seeing little boys and little girls to use as their slaves or to satisfy their lusts. That's Molokai. It's harborless coast. It's steep black cliffs that plunge straight down into the sea. End of Act Two. I've seen two questions. We had one, uh, thank you, Benson. We had one question came earlier and this came from Randy and he's asking if you visit Tremelo during the canonization trip with the bishop. And if so, how has the experience impacted you in your performance as Damien? Actually, I did not visit uh, uh, St. Joseph's Church, and I did not visit the um, where Damien is buried, well, what's left of him there. I, I, when I went to Edinburgh in 2005 or six, I believe, I visited his crypt. And when I went there, I was all by myself alone in the, in the basement of the church. And uh, I thought that I was going to have a real emotional experience because of it. And I didn't. And I was sitting there all by myself on this little tiny chair looking at this beautiful black, uh, soft, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, crypt. And um, I, I said, why, why, why am I not feeling anything? Then I got up and I walked around to the, to the end of the crypt. And there on the floor was a fresh, brand new lay that somebody had made. Somebody from Hawaii, obviously. And put it there on the floor and I lost it. That's when I had an emotional moment. A beautiful lay that somebody had left there just before I entered. So yes, I, I went, I didn't go to Tremolo, I went to St. Joseph's Church and uh, to where he went, we went to, you know, uh, the seminary, to his crypt. Uh, I spent the day there and uh, it, it was a very emotional experience. The second most experience, uh, emotional experience I had is when I actually did the play at Kalapapa. I, I did not go there on purpose for 18 years because I figured I would be overcome with emotion. And finally, they asked me, the superintendent of the parks, the national parks said, please come over and do the play uh, for the uh, people that work for the park and for the residents of the settlement. So I did. I did two performances, one on the top side of Moka'i and then down at the peninsula itself. And it was one of the great moments of my life, uh, I, I feel. Um, so yes, 
I hope that answered your question. Thank you. And I just wanted to take a moment Anymore? to apologize. We're having a lot of static. And we, uh, we, we see that. Uh, uh, I don't know what is causing it, but the internet, I guess, is not on our side today. Uh, is anybody got any other questions for Benz before we move to the next scene? Uh, you can type it on the chat. Uh, uh, it's a comment from Bob Allen uh, Benson that says, it is sad to know that the hospital at Kalawao was mostly interested in the germs than the patients. Did you have any comments on that? Well, when Damien first went there, there was, there was an empty hospital. Uh, there wasn't anybody in it. Uh, I hope I referred to that a few minutes ago. After he uh, did a lot of campaigning and protesting, they did build hospitals. And um, I, I'm not too aware of the history of those after he, his death. Most of my work and research was up to his, his death. And I know that, you know, eventually Kalapapa became a very famous treatment center uh, and very controversial as well. But I, I can't answer about, you know, more interested in the germs than the patients um, because I haven't really any reference for that. Um, but, you know, the whole thing with Hansen's disease is so controversial and fraught with, with politics, uh, both during Damien's life and afterwards. I believe there are uh, eight patients left over there. Um, last time I was there, there were 13, but I don't know too much about that. That's a picture of St. Philomena's that I took on my last trip there. Unfortunately, it's now locked. It's a federal park and uh, they keep everything under lock and key now. So you can't just walk in the door anymore. Was there another question? Uh, we had a comment uh, from one of the volunteers that work at the Kalapapa National Historical Park and uh, mentioned that at its, uh, it was reminded that at its height, there were upwards of 1,000 residents, a community yes. of not only sorrow, but one of, of music, arts, sports, etc. So there apparently apparently measure of happiness and community as well, which needs to be noted. So thank you, Julianne, for your comment. Uh, and it's noted. Yeah, the park, uh, actually the park has been closed during the pandemic. I don't think that people have been allowed back yet uh, into the park. Uh, Sister Alicia, Sister Barbara Jean, who are living there, they may probably want it to to come in on the chat is anybody is being allowed to come back to the park on the last two or three years since the closing from the pandemic. But before the pandemic, uh, the park was open for tours uh, with a limited amount of people coming at a time uh, every day on the park. And you have to be uh, sponsored by somebody that lives in the Kalapapa Peninsula in order to come in. So you cannot just come in on your own. So as we're setting up the next scene, uh, scene number three, can you talk to us about what this scene is about, Vincent? Okay, um, the next scene is a conversation that uh, Damien has with the bishop uh, about his service on the island at the, at the settlement. Of course, it was very controversial at the time. Damien was... Uh, constantly in trouble with his superiors, with the Department of Health, with the King, uh, with just about everybody, because uh, he was such an advocate. So he's having a conversation uh, with the bishop about his time there, and about how he was uh, uh, not as careful as people thought he would be. I should remind everybody that at the time of Damien, and I need to—I really appreciate that comment about the person from the settlement. Uh, yeah, after you know, I'm, my th this play is about him going there and, set, and help setting up the settlement. So before his time, it wasn't a happy, cheery place at all. Uh, by the time he died, with the help of his sister and brother Dutton and all those other people and other churches, the settlement did become quite a, a friendly place. There is, a, there is a whole bit about that in the play, in a book by uh, a Stoddard called The, the Lepers of Molokai. Uh, he speaks a quite in great depth about how happy the place is 
at the time that he visited. So that's very true, but it took a lot of intervention from others to make it so, okay? So this next scene, this is, by the way, this is the uh, set from the last presentation that I did on the uh, 22nd anniversary of uh, the play. Uh, it was supposed to be the 20th, but the pandemic got in the way. So that's me on the set, one of my favorite sets um, of the play. Behind me, you see a screen. And what I did was I had lots of slides and pictures of the settlement and of Molokai and of Honolulu at the time that Damien was alive, okay? So next scene, let me get my breath here. <clears throat> yes, Your Excellency, I do leave the light burning all night because, because a priest can do no less. Yes, I leave it open to the women as well as the men. They get sick and frightened too, you know, Your Excellency. Whoever comes to me, Your Excellency, comes to me as Christ. Your Excellency knows that. What do I care what the gossip say? Yes, I do rub ointment on their swords with my bare hands. What would Your Excellency have me do? Attend only to the men and the boys? Leave the medicine on the gatepost as visiting doctors do? Talk to my lepers through closed windows? Extort them from the public, but never talk to them in private. I am not an agent of the Board of Health, Your Excellency. I am their priest. I am their father in Christ. I am there to comfort them, to win over their hearts and their souls. Yes, Your Excellency, I did promise to be prudent. And, and in my own way, in my very own way, I, I, I am prudent. Since I'm there to comfort Christ in them, I never, I never, ever let there be any, any sign of fear or disgust. Never let it come between us. Never let there be anything but, but love, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, I have my uh, own idea of prudence to let other people have theirs. Yes, Your Excellency, I do share my pipe with them when we're together of an evening and I light my pipe. And one of them asks for a puff. Can I refuse, Your Excellency? Can I? Yes. Yes, Your Excellency. I have thought of that. And if it's God's will, I am prepared. Your Excellency, by remembering that those worm infested ulcers, by remembering that they're the wounds of Christ, that, that, that is how I continue to go on from day to day. That is how I endure. Yes, Your Excellency. Thank you. His Excellency said that I'm a fool. Yes? Yes, Your Excellency. Oh, huh. thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. His Excellency said, said that he meant that I was a fool for Christ. End of scene. I started getting into that one. <laughs> it's one of my favorite. It's the end of Act One. Question. Thank you, Vincent. Very good. Uh, very controversial scene. We remember that the relationship between Damien and his uh, superiors were really strong, as Damien has to go and fight for the people on the settlement trying to get the things that he needed. Uh, as we're getting people to continue adding their comments or questions on the chat, I wanted to ask you, uh, Vince, how did the script came to you? How did this show got into your hands and and why? Why did you decide to, to take it in and, and work on it for the last 20 years? Very good question. Thank you very much. Aldith Morris is the uh, playwright. She works at the University of Hawaii. She was in advertising and public relations, and she was also the head of the Hawaii press. She was very good friends with an actor teacher named Terrence Knapp. She wrote the play originally for him in uh, the 70s, late 70s. Uh, and he performed it at UH in various ways. And then because the play was so well received, uh, Hawaii Public Television took it on and filmed it and presented it on Hawaii Public Television, I think in 1980. Uh, 
I saw the play at Manoa at the University of Hawaii in the, uh, in the theater. I was at the time in my 40s or maybe 30s, I can't remember which, and I said to myself, I'm going to do that play someday. It is an amazing piece of theater. And as a script, for those of you who like scripts, it is so well written. And it's a one-man play. It's about 36 pages, but it is so well written that it's almost impossible to forget where you're going because of the structure of the play. So I said, I'm going to do that someday. Because at the time, I was known as a comedic actor. So in, uh, that was in 1980. It took me until 1999 to decide to do it. And a friend of mine who's a director said, okay, let's try it. And we did it. And it was a huge success, uh, the first 12 performances. And then since then, I've been doing it on and on again. Now you ask me why I do the play. I do the play, if I could summarize it by saying, I was amazed, I continue to be amazed at the faith that Damien had in spite of all the obstacles in his life. He had so many problems with his authority. He was, you know, he took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And he had a lot of trouble with, with the obedience one uh, because of the fact that he was constantly in trouble with his bishop. So the faith that this man had, had the, the things that he did to help his people uh, was faith. It was faith. I don't understand. I still to this day have a lot of questions about that level and that degree of faith. So... That's the major reason I did it. And the play resonates so beautifully with people who are thinking or about challenges in their life. And more importantly, as I told my young students, as a professor, don't tell me one person can't make massive change. Father Damien changed the world. So that's, those are some of the reasons. I hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. Thank you, Benson, for that. Uh, this, this next picture that I got, from you here that are gonna share, I really like it, as you are transforming yourself into the character of Damien. And, and I know that uh, now you are gonna get into a scene number four, uh, which is picture, which I also love, showing the cassock and the hat sitting on that chair. Uh, it inspires to me a feeling of kind of, like a sadness, it's almost like giving up. I don't know if that's what this scene is about, <laughs> but uh, I'll let you introduce the next scene. Okay, that picture was taken in New York City when I, I did the play down in Chelsea uh, for a, a group of people, wonderful performance. Yeah, that's the night before the street naming ceremony. And I also I use this picture to show that after 22 years of doing this play, I'm kind of hanging up the cassock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, the next scene, uh, Damien was faced with many criticisms in his life. He was a, an object of, of great controversy by everybody. So this particular scene is when people are gossiping about him. Oh, the gossips, they had their day too. They said that I slept with women. It isn't true. I kept my vow of chastity. <laughs> not that I was, not that I was never tempted. <laughs> the night, the night of Sammy's wedding. Sammy was the son of a non leper family. He lived just outside the settlement. It was an evening wedding. Oh, flowers, music, full moon. Oh, a luau afterward. I didn't have a horse at the time, so I decided to not go back to the settlement. It was too far a walk for me to do. So I planned on spending the night with Sammy's family. We all slept together on the floor in, the, in this one large room. After the father had blown out the candle and everybody uh, was asleep and everything was still, someone reached out their hand and touched me. It was a young was the young daughter of the family. I got up and I went outside. The air was cool. Oh, it was a beautiful evening. Everything was fragrant. Every, every instinct in me was alive. I got to the stone wall and then I turned around and there she was in the doorway, in the moonlight, naked. 
I had no one to talk to, no, no other priest. When I did get to Honolulu to confess, the bishop told me that strong men put such temptation to, to use. So after that, whenever I saw her, whenever I saw her on the cross or whenever she was standing in the doorway naked, I said to, to myself, God, God alone, God alone, you are my trot. You are my love forever. You see, when a priest works alone or has no companion priest, he sometimes go weeks or months without confession. This, this was a great hardship for me. And when I went to Molokai, it was with the understanding that I could go to Honolulu once a month to confess. Abruptly, without any warning whatsoever, the Lord had told me that I could never again leave Molokai, that I could declare myself a leper, or that I could leave the settlement forever. That is how I kept my vow of chastity. Questions? Thank you again for this new scene, uh, Vincent. Is anybody has any comments, any questions uh, for Vincent? How's uh, our time? We still have time. Yes, we we are good on time. So, is anybody had questions? And um, please, this is the time to put it on the screen, uh, the chat. Uh, Powerful scene, powerful scene that you just uh, share with us, Vincent. And and I can imagine uh, all the gossiping, as you've said, uh, the, the way around and, and how Father Damien has to deal with that as being all by himself. Uh, now, uh, is any part of the play, I, I saw the play many, many years ago, uh, it, it is any parts of the play in which is a mention of the arrival of the sisters of St. Francis and um, St. Marianne Cope coming into Kalapapa to assist. Actually, no. <laughs> there is not? Okay. That, that kind of... No, I, I, there's mention of... There's a mention of a Father Conradi coming to replace him at the very beginning of the play. Damien's on his deathbed, and uh, Father Conradi and Brother uh, Tim, Brother Jim, no, Jim, come to, to give him the last rite. There's no mention of any nuns. But of course, you all know, I think, because this is also for Sister, that she was only with him for a few months before he died because she was stuck in Honolulu. She couldn't get out of Honolulu. Father Damien, uh, at some point, I think two years earlier, had sent... Uh, uh, a request to many, many convents on the U.S. mainland for sisters to come and help nurse. And she's the only one that answered. So she eventually shows up, but is in Honolulu for some time before she eventually ends up on Molokai at Kalapapa with him. But she was only with him for four or five months before he died. And then she takes over. Mm, okay, thank you. So there's no mention of her at all or any sisters in the play. In the play. Okay. Someone needs to write a a play about her. Well, it is. It is a play about her. Uh, it's called November Sun, which I had the privilege to direct uh, many years ago. Oh, I need a copy. We will have. We will having one of the webinars about that. So, so okay. yeah, it's a very powerful show uh, about her. So another monologue too, by the way. So, so it's okay. Well, let's go to the next scene. But before we go to the next scene, I want you to talk to us about your mini Cooper and, 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 and what is happening here in this picture. This is called one of my favorite pictures, Damien on the Road. And that's my former mini Cooper. I got rid of this in 2016. And that's the set in the back seat. That's the bishop's chair. That's the mat. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of other things in there that were part of the set. Because on Maui, people asked me to do the play. So I would just stick everything in the car and go off and set it up. Hana, uh, up country. Uh, yeah. And I loved it. So I'd be driving around with the car like that. So that was uh, the set of the play. Very portable. So this is truly a one-man show. So I hope that explains it. No, no crew. No, no, no. Yes. Just you. 
I want to very quickly just read something from the play in answer to the uh, person that said something about the settlement being a happy place. This is a quote. Just let me read it to you from the script uh, that, to, to let everybody know that what she said was so true. And this is something that Stoddard wrote in his book, The Lepers of Molokai. He writes, I find it strange that their hearts are still comparatively gay. Stoddard is right. Our hearts are comparatively gay because deep down inside, we've come to know that our lives have meaning. We are a concentrated cry for help. Our voices are being heard. We are a symbol to all lepers. We have escaped from our degrading exile. No board of health can ever again confine us to the sour tongue of land. That is a quote from the play, from the book written by Stoddard uh, after he visited the settlement. That they had been transformed from a place of hell to a, to, well, I mean, a relatively good place for people to be given what they were going through. Thank you. Well, do you want to set up for us now the final? And then the last the final scene, scene that yeah. is going to show you what else today. Okay. Uh, the final scene uh, is about when he finds out he has leprosy. Now, I want to preface this by reminding people, if you didn't know, that at the time of, of leprosy in Hawaii, Hansen's disease now, there were many people who believed, this is before Louis Pasteur, remember, this is before he knew a lot about bacteria and so forth. Many people believed that leprosy was a form of syphilis. So you can imagine what they did with that. Because if people had leprosy, then that, that was also implying that they were immoral. Or they had wild, crazy uh, life, sex lives and all that. So when Damien got leprosy, people said, aha, he's got leprosy. So maybe he has been playing around. Maybe he caught it. That's what they believed. And um, it's, it, they didn't find out for another 15 or 20 years that it was bacteria, and that it was related to tuberculosis. My years might be uh, incorrect, but at the time, that's what they thought. Many people thought it was the form of syphilis. Okay, scene. But, you know, there was always the question in people's minds that Damien himself was immune from leprosy. Well, the answer to that question came one night in December, 1884, after 12 years of being at the settlement. Oh, there had been warning signs. Here on my arm, with a little, with a little uh, corrosive supplement, and they, they cleared it up. There was severe pain in, in my left leg, but Dr. Trousseau told me that it was, it was only a sciatica, and eventually it too went away. My face had turned also a deeper bronze, but, but then I run around every day in, 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 the, in the sun, right? And to kill the time, I go up there and I'm on the church roof, repairing it, patching it in the, in the direct sun. Well, on this particular evening, I'm writing a letter home to my mother. It's already for her birthday. <laughs> I recall my promise of coming home in 12 years. <laughs> Suddenly I'm overcome with a terrible homesickness. I so much want to hear my mother's voice. I want to breathe the clean, fresh Flemish air to walk in the snow. I hear the sleigh bells. <laughs> So I put the letter aside to my mother and I get up and find my bravery. And I pour the boiling water into the basin to soak my feet. My left one first. I find my place and I begin to read and I go to put in my right foot. But I had forgotten to pour in the cold water and I jerk my left foot out. And the skin is hanging from the flesh and blisters are beginning to form and there is no pain. My leprosy is speedily confirmed, not only by the doctors in Honolulu, but by the look, by the look in people's faces. The camphor in their hands and their handkerchief. Their hands clasped firmly behind their backs. I am no longer Father Damien. I am a contaminated animal. I am a leper. I am 
a leper. End of scene. Uh, thank you uh, for that final scene. We have a question for you, Vince. I uh, don't know if you may be able to share something about this. Uh, the question is, did Damien challenge the Honolulu aristocracy as to not doing enough for the Kalapapa settlement? They were deemed more oh, yeah. portable and open yes. in the middle and upper class. Go ahead. Um, he did not do it on purpose. He was in a lot of trouble because uh, he was made world famous, not of his own doing. I'm going to, I'm going to, if we could squeeze in one final paragraph, I will do this in a second because it answers that question. Damien became famous unbeknownst to himself by people and journalists. Remember the telegraph was, was the modern internet then. Damien became one of the first international stars because of the telegraph and because of newspaper articles about him in the San Francisco Chronicle, in the New York Times, and in the London newspapers. So they were writing about him and he didn't know about it. And they were calling him a saint. In many ways, I like to say that he was the Saint Teresa of the uh, 19th century, but he had nothing to do with it. And everybody around him, his bishop, his church, the board of health, the aristocracy began to get very concerned about all the trouble that was being caused in his name. And he began to get gifts and he began to get money and a lot of it went over his head. So he got completely isolated by everybody, by his new bishop. The king was very unhappy with Damien. The board of health, of course, was extremely unhappy. And then you've got to remember, and the, this is not an opinion. This is a historical fact. The Anglican church and the Catholic church at the time were vying for supremacy of the aristocracy. The Hawaiian royalty were very, very uh, uh, impressed with Anglicanism. And they were very tied to the English crown. So you had the Catholic church was in ascendancy and the Protestant Anglican church or Episcopalian church very much in favor of the aristocracy and the upper classes. So that's the battle that it had. Damien was caught in the battle, political, social, religious battle of the churches and of the politicians. Uh, and not by his own fault. That is fact. Uh, it's implied in the play. I'm going to read you something, if I may. Okay. You see, when it became known that I was a leper, reporters had a field day. Banner headlines. Soldier of Christ struck down. Danian hangs on a leper cross. And column after column about the settlement about the lepers and myself. Letters of love and symphony pour in and gifts of money, 30,000 francs or more in all. But the king, the government, the board of health, and the mission, they are all offended. The, the articles do not mention them. When I try to explain that I was not responsible for the articles, they tell me that I am drunk with pride, so drunk that I am dangerous, unfit to handle all of that money. In future, the Board of Health will receive all financial gifts, even those personally for me. What does a government agent know about a leper's needs? When I protest, the new bishop insists that I have an examination of conscience. Have I really been doing the will of God? Or were my ceaseless activities, my unbalanced generosities, my caprices of self-will, my stubborn lack of prudence merely following the, the bent of my own temperament? Have I deceived myself? Have I a secret vanity that feeds on notoriety? Have I, have I let this prominence and praise corrupt me? So that's where he's left because of all of the publicity about him over the years. Many people visited Kalapapa. Robert Louis Stevenson, Princess, uh, you know, everybody went there to visit to see what he was doing. So
So he became very famous. And to answer the question, yes, he became very, very controversial among the corridors of power. And his dilemma, and this is one reason why I love the play, is he took a vow of poverty and chastity and obedience. He had that battle. Thank you. Okay. So that was the last scene that Vince has prepared for us today. Uh, Anybody we'll there? A few more minutes. I've got things downloaded. Yeah, we have a few more minutes. If people yep. have any additional questions or comments uh, for Vincent, uh, this is the time to write it down in the chat. I do have one more question for you, Vincent. You said earlier that the picture of the cassock with the hat on the chair represents that you're hanging out for good uh, Damien's performance. Uh, did that mean that it is no possibilities for you to do the show one more time? <laughs> well, I said no a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. I mean, just, you know, you have to suspend belief. Like I said, I'm 77 years old. But I always joke, and please don't take this wrong, folks, that he looks so bad when he died that I get away with playing him at 77. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, but as you asked me earlier, Deacon, uh, it's quite a, an emotional journey for me to do the play. And at my age now, uh, one of the things that made me so happy last June was I was able, we couldn't have an intermission because of the pandemic. So I was on the stage alone for 90 minutes. And I did it. I pulled it off. Memory, total memorization. Wow. So that was cool. Somebody, oh, Cordelia, Cordelia, somebody asked a question I saw. On the yeah, we had a question perhaps related to what you just said. You know, the question said, uh, from Colette is, how has performing this play so many times had impacted you personally? I am blessed. Uh, I am blessed by the fact that I think I've made some really good choices in my life. When I decided to do this play, I had no idea, no idea at all, that I would do it for 23 years. And that not a day goes by, and I mean this really, yesterday, not a day goes by where somebody doesn't come up to me and talk about this play. They saw it 20 years ago. They saw it last year they talk about it i can't go to costco i can't go to food land i can't go anywhere without somebody coming up to me and talking to me about the play so this brings such satisfaction as an actor and then the comments that are made about how it affected them you know i i i, I like to do these scenes but it really doesn't anyway show you how the play builds and the impact the emotions and for those of you who don't know, Damien is dead during this play. He has died, and he's telling his story to the audience. So I talk directly to people in the audience because he's telling his story. So he's in and out of time in his life. The play jumps all around. So what does it mean to me? Well, imagine doing this play for 22 years and affecting so many people. It's, it's amazing. It's very rewarding. I have to keep my ego down. <laughs> well, here we got some people coming with some good questions for you now. Uh, okay. As an actor, you are open to play other roles, like for example, Maximilian Cole, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, I do. I. I, uh, but this is my life's work. This play has become my signature piece. Everywhere I go, I mean, it's, oh, you're Damien. Oh, we saw you in Damien. I mean, I have no, no getting away from it. And it's good. It's good, you know. I don't mind doing it again and again because of the message that it gives, especially today. And, you know, you don't have to be a Catholic. This is a very good play for Catholics uh, in general because of the, 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 the you know, the, the church's season on it, but it's also good for anybody else because it's about faith, it's about commitment, and it's about bringing change about if you're, if you're persistent enough and selflessness, yeah. 
Vinny, and part of your bio earlier, I mentioned. It's, it's, it... oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go on. Oh, I was going to say, uh, as part of your bio earlier, I mentioned that in 2016, you created a company now we call Oh Boy Productions. Right. So tell us a little more about what, what are you doing right now? I know with the pandemic, probably things are a little on hold, but can you tell us a little about that company that's still active? Uh, what, what are your plants right now? Is anything on, 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 on the oven cooking right now? Or Actually, actually a lot. I just reopened the company. Uh, I did, uh, I do classics. I've done Medea, the Greek play. I've done a bunch of Moliere, if you know who Moliere is. French, the French consider him to be their Shakespeare. I've done a play that's received amazing results. It's called Albatross. It's written by my friend in San Francisco. Albatross has been done in London, New York, Boston, San Francisco. Uh, I'm going to a production of it. I'm, I'm going to see it in Dublin. I've done it on Maui. I'm doing it again in January. It was set, and it's based upon the rhyme of the ancient mariner. And the playwright, Matt, who's a good friend of mine, he has the play opening on Broadway in July called The Kite Runner, which is the adaptation of the book. So Matt's an up-and-coming playwright. I produce a lot of his plays. And Albatross, I will produce again. I did it two years ago on Maui. It was a massive success. It was called The Play of the Decade. Yeah, the actor. And I'm doing it again in January here on Maui. So that's what I'm doing. And classics. I, I, by classics, I mean plays that resonate throughout a wide breadth of society. They're considered to be classic plays. So Moliere, Medea, um, Tartuffe, um, Albatross. Yeah. Very active. That's what kept me alive during the pandemic. <laughs> Getting ready to do all this stuff. And Damien is not produced by Old Boy. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, a couple of other questions and a comment here from Julianne. Uh, this is the Kalapapa volunteer to make a comment earlier. She want, uh, he wants to, to let you know, to say thank you for sharing this impactful performance and, and for your insights. Now we have one more question for you and, and I'm interested to find out also, did you get to meet Terrence now? If uh, they did the first play and did, did he talk to you or give you any guidance? about how to perform Damien or? Well, he, 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 let me say, first of all, uh, yes, yes, I did. And um, I was supposed to do Damien in Honolulu in Kaneohe at the Windward Community College. They have a beautiful new theater there, Paleku Theater, but it fell through. And I was hoping when I did it there that Nat would come. Nat died last year. I was in communication with him over the years via email. Uh, I did talk to him at the very beginning about me doing the play. But now many other actors have done the play, but I think I've probably done it more than anybody else on the planet. And so I was respectful of his, his play and the fact that his video is the only one that exists of the play. We do it very differently. Terrence was a highly trained old Vic actor. He was trained at the old Vic in England. Excellent actor. His Damien is wonderful. The play that he did, the video is wonderful, but I'm very, very different. And if I may say, and I'm gonna brag here, on my opening night in the year 2000 in April, I did not know that the playwright's son was in the audience. And he came up to me afterwards and he said, and this, this has got nothing to do with Terrence. But he said to me, that's the way my mother wanted it done. And, and I was so moved by that, that, you know, I've never forgotten it. I'm, good thing I didn't know he was there before the play started. But Terrence is wonderful. But if you see the film, if you ever see me, it's very different. I'm much, much more highly strong, much more emotional, much more, um, you, you know, not violent, but get prone to anger from time to time. And Damien was that way. He would fly off the handle. So people don't like that representation. Well, thank you. Uh, so yes, I had Terrence's inferred uh, permission. 
Well, I wanted to thank you uh, for this wonderful uh, opportunity uh, today to share with us uh, your journey through these 20 plus years of performing and, and performing and bringing to life uh, Damien uh, and, and to, to your performance, getting people to know about him uh, in a different way, in a different perspective. Uh, you know, as a Damien Marianne uh, Catholic Conference, it's our goal to educate people on our saints. And, and this is a way that we do it, you know, by sharing about their yeah. stories, to sharing about how people uh, touch others uh, through their lives and to the, in this case, and through your performance. So well, I wanted to thank you again for being with us today on behalf of all the people that have watched this video and, and those that will watch it in the prosperity because we will, as we said at the beginning, we recorded this and we will put it on our website. Uh, we will continue to, to see, to have people the opportunity to see you. And, and I truly hope, you know, as an actor myself, that, that you don't hang up that cassock yet <laughs> and that somebody <laughs> will call you one more time to to do this show again and because I can see it that is on your is tattooing in your veins it, it is right there in your head so we need to continue seeing uh, the passionate Damien coming out of you uh, through your performances so I would like to uh, well, uh, go ahead I just wanted to thank you for give, for um, making this venue possible it's very important uh, in, that people see Damien not only as a saint, but as a man, uh, as a passionate man who, uh, through his work, did what he did. So now that he's a saint, you know, we can't hang that veneer of, of uh, sanctity on him. We need to see the real man. And hopefully we're going to see that. And with sisters as well. And now I'm so excited to hear about the work that's going on with John Dutton. Thank you. Uh, and the, the, the examination today is like, so thank you very much for allowing me to do this. You know, our pleasure. Take that off. Yeah. Uh, stay with us. Don't go yet. Uh, I wanted to say some final remarks in here uh, for our friends that are joining us from all different parts. Uh, we are going to be taking a break uh, during the summer. So there will be no webinars until August. Uh, our next webinar is scheduled for August 13th, so please mark your calendars. Uh, and this webinar, our speaker will be Father Lane Akiona from the Sacred Hearts. He is actually the current provincial of the Sacred Hearts for the whole day. Oh, Lane. And he's going to come and talk to us about uh, the Damien and Marianne Education Center. The, it was, it's been built in Waikiki next to uh, St. Augustine Church. And we've, we've been looking forward for the grand opening of this education center about Marian and Damien. And we know that because of the pandemic, it's been delayed. But Father Lane in August will come over and talk to us about it and perhaps shine some light about when we can expect to see this wonderful facilities open in which we are going to be able to continue to learn more about our saints, Damien, Marianne, and hopefully soon, Brother Dutton too. And then our next uh, webinar will be on October 15. Uh, we are keeping for now a secret of who's going to be our speaker for that one. And then on December 10. So please mark those three days, August 13, October 15 and December 10 in your calendars as our next uh, webinars uh, that we had scheduled for you. Under the same theme, Hawaiian Saints Inspiring the Artistic Journey. As always, we wanted to thank you for all your wonderful support, uh, not only financially, but by attending these webinars and helping us promote the lives of Damien and Marianne throughout our nation. Uh, as always, we continue to ask you to consider us uh, when you think about donating uh, to organizations like ours so that we can continue educating, inspire, and empower people. 
Uh, you can visit our website at the dmcchawaii.org and click the donate button and donate. Uh, we have some very generous donors. Uh, they have donated recently and because of their donations, that is helping us to continue to do these webinars for you and continue to present and bring Damien and Marianne uh, to you, uh, to your homes, through these opportunities. Uh, as always, we also continue working on the opportunities to bring our Marian, Damien and Marian Catholic Conference. Uh, the board of directors is on conversations now that the pandemic is not over because we know the pandemic is not over, but things are getting a little more open now and things are start opening up in Hawaii. So we hope that in the near future, we are going to be able to bring back a face-to-face -face, uh, Catholic conference, uh, the Damien and Marian Catholic Conference, again in Hawaii. So keep tuned with us uh, so that we can bring more information over that. So my friends, uh, we are not going to see you throughout the summer, but I want you to know that our prayers are with you for a safe and a wonderful summer with you and your families. Uh, continue to visit us in our Facebook. Uh, continue to, to share with us your stories and how the, you have been touched by the lives of our saints. And as we close out today, again, one final mahalo and thank you to Vincent for being with us this morning and sharing his performance of Father Damien with us. And, and to continue to thank also our, not only the brothers and, and sisters and fathers of uh, the Sacred Hearts that continue the mission of bro, uh, Father Damien, but also the Sisters of St. Francis for all that they do in continued uh, bringing the mission of St. Marian Cope into our islands and the rest of the world. So let us close in prayer as we depart today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to gather today for Vincent, for his performance, for his sharing with us today. And we give you thanks for the blessings of this speaker and for all those that continue to provide their support to us. San Damien was called to a life of service to God. He indeed was called to complete surrender to his will no matter where it took him. Lord, help us that inspired by the life of St. Damien and St. Marianne Cope, we can too be open to the call to serve others. St. Damien and St. Marianne, we pray that you intercede for us so we too have the courage to surrender to God's will. Grant us the strength you had in your vocation. Help us to remember that earthly concerns must come second to the desires God has placed on our heart. We all ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. We're still in the Easter season. We will see you soon. Thank you to be with us today. Visit us at the dmcchawaii.org to continue to watch our webinars. Have a wonderful day until the next time. Thank you. Mahalo. See you soon.